The winner of the last Choose Your Knife contest was the Bar Griffer Aurora in CPM 3V. If you want to know more about this knife, keep watching. Hello YouTube, this is Dutch Bushka of Knives and today I'm doing a short review on the Bar Griffer Aurora in CPM 3V. Uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago I did a choose your knife again and you could choose between uh, five different uh, Bar Griffers. Um, um, you guys choose the Bar Griffer Aurora most. Uh, to do a review about. So here it is, my review about the Aurora CPM 3V. All right, so let's start off with an overview of the Bar Griffer Aurora. I'll put the specifications of the knife, like thickness, length, and stuff like that, in the description because it's not that interesting to talk about. But um, yeah, the Bar Griffer Aurora and CPM 3V. Um, my Bar Griffer Aurora comes in canvas, natural canvas. I really love the color. Um, it's, it has a really natural look and I choose to have liners on mine because it makes the handle a little bit thicker and I really like that. And I also really love the handle geometry, the handle geometry of this knife. Uh, it feels great in the hand and this handle is very suitable for people with larger hands. But it would also fit somebody with smaller hands. So it's a very versatile handle. Really like the handle itself. Uh, the natural canvas needs a little bit of um, maintenance. You need to oil it, oil it once in a while or put some beeswax on it to prevent it from staining. I think a competitor of the Aurora knife is the very popular Bravo one from Bar Griffer. And as you can see, the Aurora has a little bit more length, but um, has a, it's a little bit thinner than the Bar Griffer Bravo one. So yeah you would have to choose yourself which one you would prefer. A little bit extra length or a little bit extra thickness. Um, the CPM 3V is an absolute fabulous steel. CPM 3V is uh, one of the best steels in my opinion. Um, it has very good edge retention, a very very high toughness and uh, yeah it just it just lasts. So in a survival knife this is a great steel and uh, I have never actually had problems with staining, so my CPM 3V has never rusted before. I always keep my knives clean and uh, a very important thing with these knives is to keep the leather sheath dry. About the leather sheath, it comes in a nice uh, leather sheath, a friction, a friction sheath, so uh, it keeps the knife in by friction with the leather itself. It comes with a fire steel loop, which I really like. Um, this is called the Bushcrafter Sheath, I believe, and it is made by Sharpshooter. Very good quality sheath. Um, what I did is I put some snow seal on it to seal it from, uh, from water, make it waterproof. And give it a nice deeper color. And I really like that. And I have a self-made fire steel in here from uh, Olive Hood. So what I want to do in this test is, I want to do just the regular test I always do, some feather sticking, some batoning, um, and then for the carving, what I need is a, uh, I need a new baton for my, um, for my batoning jobs, and I always have a certain type of baton, and yeah, I'm going to make it using this knife. It's very easy to make, but it's a nice test to use the Bog River. Uh, Bug River Aurora 4. So yeah, let's do some tests. Alright, so before we do anything else, uh, let me show you how sharp the CPM 3V can be on this Aurora. Uh, because of the kind of thinness of the blade and the very fine grain structure of CPM 3V, it is kind of easy to make a very sharp edge on this blade. So I actually haven't sharpened this knife for quite a while, only stropped it after use and this is what I have. Alright, so as you could see, the Bark River Aurora is a very beautiful knife and I've used it a lot. This was a, my primary knife for quite a while 
and I really really love it. This is one of my most favorite knives as you might have seen in my uh, top 5 bushcraft knives video. And yeah, I really really deeply love this knife. It is it is so multifunctional. So yeah, as you also just seen, it is very sharp and for feather sticking it is very important to have a sharp knife to make very nice feathers. So let's start feather sticking on this piece of wood. So what I do is always start off very controlled, making these very fine feather sticks. And the thinner geometry of this Bark River Aurora makes it very easy. Making very fine feather sticks would be a harder job with a knife like um, the Bravo one because it's a lot thicker. And yeah, personally, I also really love the Bravo one a lot. I like it a lot because it's a beast. But um, the Aurora is, in my opinion, a little bit more versatile in use. And that's why I prefer the Aurora above the Bravo one. And also, that little bit extra length of this Aurora really gives you. In a edge, even in in batoning, I think it gives you more of an edge than the extra thickness. To be honest, but we'll come to that part later. But in feather sticking, this thinness of the aurora gives you that edge in feather sticking, and so carving performance. I always like to um, mention feather sticking as a cutting performance of the knife because you are cutting the wood you're really slicing off the wood so you can kind of determine if this knife is a good slicer and of course every knife can slice but you will feel feel the difference between different knives and also Scandi will not feather stick as well as convex because this convex tends to kind of glide over the wood instead of biting deep into it. And that is why Scandi is kind of better for carving and Convex, which I mainly use, is a uh, very versatile, so it's a little bit of everything. If you don't make your Convex too steep, and that's why I really like Scandivex, this is a kind of Scandivex, but um, yeah, you can also, you can carve with it, not the best, but you can carve with it, and you can do all the other it's a kind of golden golden midway so you can kind of do everything with it and that is why I like really like the convex and I always thin the convex a little bit down from uh, from Falcon Evans standard so as you can see we have a very beautiful um, we have a very beautiful feather stick here and this will be very easy to light so yeah let's light it with the with the fire steel I made, and then you can also see the the sharpness of the spine of this of this blade. The Aurora has always been a very good uh, fire striker for me. So, again, in that, I also love the Aurora. So yeah, let's check it out. All right, so set my fire steel. There you go, easy as that. All right, so what I'm going to make here is a baton like this, kind of hammer tool to um, split, to make it easy to split wood with your knife. And yeah, I know there's an always endless discussion about whether you shoot or shoot a baton with a knife um, an axis for splitting wood I know but um, I really really enjoy the relaxing relaxed feeling 
when you're just splitting wood, wood around the campfire. You, I mean, these knives are full tang, and they're just made to with, withstand such impact. So why not use it? I, I mean, a uh, knife with a red tang or something like that, I would never use for uh, a heavy batoning job. Maybe only making some very tiny woods to start the fire with. But yeah, it's just an amazing feeling for me to uh, be in nature and baton with my knife. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a baton like this. This one is a bit too light. So I've picked a um, heavy hardened or hardened dried uh, piece of oak. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my silky first and I'm going to saw around it. So first I'm going to look how long I want my handle. So my hand is around here. So this should be fine. And I'm going to turn the log as I'm sawing this kind of circle around the log itself. And this is one of the simplest but most handy bushcraft tools you can make. You can also use these kind of hammers in different sizes to um, hammer in your tent pegs or even large poles that you made for making a shelter. So I made a start with the with the silky. What I'm going to do now is take my knife. You can use a previous baton or a log piece of wood for this, and I'm going to cut off small pieces at a time with the aurora. So cut off here. Look on the So as you can see, we really are kind of forming a handle here for the baton. And I'm going to use my knife to uh, round it off so it's comfortable to, uh, to hold and use as a baton. And as you can see, it's very easy going using this uh, Aurora knife. Alright, so here we go, I'll give you guys a closer look. So as you can see, we've got a nice rounded handle. Don't worry too much about the bark, it will come off eventually when batoning. So uh, yeah, let's use this baton for some batoning. As you can see I've rounded off all the corners so it doesn't give me blisters. And this is a nice small, kind of heavy baton. And uh, as you can see, it only took a few minutes to make with my Aurora knife. All right, so um, I have some logs here that um, are the size that I use around my campfire. Uh, I already already pre-cut these very large logs with my axe, but this is the kind. These are the kinds of logs that I make smaller with my knife around the campsite. So this will be a fair comparison. And these have been sitting for a long time in my, uh, in my wood shed. 
so they are quite hard. So we'll see uh, how the Aurora performs. So these will be. So these are a very good size to uh, put on your first flames or on your small fire to uh, to make it bigger. And as you can see, the Aurora does an excellent job. So this one has a nasty knot, so let's see how it handles a knot. <laughs> well, that was the knot. No problem at all. Split it sideways. No problem. So yeah, it splits knots like a beast. All right, so I collected uh, two pieces of wood from the forest, a little bit thicker, and show you. It might seem like a little difference between the uh, Aurora and the, and the uh, Bravo One, but as you can see, this just doesn't do the job for splitting a wood like this. Well, the Aurora just has that slight advantage, and um, you won't. You you might think that you won't find this often, but I often find that the particular thickness of wood that I like is just a tiny bit too long, uh, too thick for the Bravo One. And um, yeah, of course, the Bravo One, like I said, is a very very excellent knife. I really really love it, but uh, I just love the Aurora Aurora a little bit better for even for batoning well maybe for batoning they would would be even but uh, just for an all-round knife I like the uh, Aurora a bit better No problem for the Aurora. And this piece of oak, pretty hard, it has a few nuts in it. Looks a bit molded on the outside, but inside, as you can hear, is pretty hard. And look, this Aurora has a lot of uh, space where you can still hit on the tang of the blade. So no problem as expected. So. Alright YouTube, let's uh, wrap this video up, because it's pouring down on me. Um, the Aurora, we did some regular tests with it. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't do much more with it, but um, it held up great. We have zero edge problems, even though we had some pretty sandy logs to baton. Um, but yeah, the Borg River Aurora shines in its versatility. It is just so versatile, it is light enough. It is nimble enough, but it's also large enough to do larger tasks, uh, smaller cutting tasks, uh, around the camp stuff, just an excellent knife. And with this CPM3V, it really complements the quality of the knife. The CPM3V on this is awesome. 
holds a very good edge. Um, let's get the Brav 1 here for a second. Uh, as you might know, the Brav 1 is probably, probably the most popular Bog Gripper knife. And for good reason, it has excellent handle geometry. But in my opinion, this knife is pretty heavy. And just a little bit too short for how thick this knife is. So, it, on the one hand, it is a great batana because it has a lot of splitting power. But on the other hand, it just lacks a little bit of length. And uh, I think the balance in the Aurora is better in that way because you have a little bit extra length but it's thinner, so it's, I think it's more all round. Um, yeah. Handle geometry of the Brav 1 is slightly better than on the Aurora, but still the Aurora has excellent handle geometry. Um, like I said, I love the Bar Griffin Brav 1, but I love the Bar Griffin Aurora even more. I had to get used to this kind of pointy look to it. It looks a bit like a spear, but um, yeah. The moment I started working with this knife, I was in love. It is just such an excellent, beautiful knife. And um, for a knife with this build quality, the CPM 3V, which is an excellent, excellent steel, one of my most favorite steels, just really complements the build quality of this knife. And together, Bar River Putin put together an awesome package with the Bar River Aurora. Uh, yeah, nothing more to say about it. Sorry I couldn't do more with it. This knife deserves a lot more. Uh, I could build a whole city with this knife. But uh, I'm getting a bit wet here. So yeah, guys. Uh, do I recommend this knife? Yes, I highly, highly recommend this knife. This is my favorite Bark River. So yes. Uh, if you're looking at the Bravo 1, for a batoning knife, I would suggest looking at the Bravo 1.5 or 1.25 because it just has that little bit extra length. Uh, you also have the Bark River LT, Bravo LT, which personally I wouldn't get because I, I do love the thickness of this knife. But yeah, in a way, it just makes more sense to, to have this Aurora for the task I would use the graph one for. So I hope you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I will give you one show of the sharpness uh, that we end with after all the tasks. All right, we, uh, we did some carving, we did some batoning, we did some feather sticking, and um, not extremely tough to do with a knife, but uh, it was, the batoning job was a bit sandy, and yeah, of course it's all a bit demanding for the for, for the edge. Nothing too much, but we'll see that in the sharpness. Because this knife didn't care about all the tasks we, th we threw at it. It is as sharp as that we started with. So. If you're looking for a bug river, I can recommend the Aurora. Beautiful knife.